left school 15 minutes early and drove back to the valley for a demo appointment. <clears throat> Knowing that I was facing a potentially painful procedure, coupled with my somewhat irrational fear of the dentist, I was less than enthusiastic to pull into the parking lot. I had only seen this dentist once before for a general checkup. But through the course of small talk, I learned that we had both attended Monongahela Valley Catholic High School back in the day. As I reclined in the chair under the relentlessly bright overhead light, waiting for the note pane to take effect, the dentist made small talk about his two sons going back to school after summer vacation. For some reason, he referenced our high school library, a rather large, rather intimidating sister of charity who patrolled the library and the hallway outside their domain with a stern, loud, and unrelenting voice. I laughed because I hadn't thought of this teacher for quite some time. This offhand comment began a litany of brief, yet detailed, and almost 30 year old memories. My dentist is three years older than I am, so he was a senior when I was a freshman. I didn't know him for the year we were in the same school and we certainly did not travel in the same social circles. Yet as we played Do You Remember, we found a great deal of shared memories. He asked if I remembered the sister who had taught us freshman religion, and I did. He asked if I remembered how she would write the letters M N F on her chalkboard at the beginning of the week through the fall and the early winter. I didn't. It seemed that those letters stood for Monday Night Football, and Sister would write these as a visible reminder for her students to be certain to watch her favorite sport later that evening. Apparently, Sister stopped liking football between the three years that we had as a teacher. However, I did remember her writing the letters J and J for Jesus, Mary, and Joseph on the board before we began taking our daily notes. We also shared a somewhat uncomfortable chuckle at the memory of our mutual freshman English teacher. She had been famous, or rather infamous, for chucking the hardcover Merriam-Webster dictionary in the direction of any particular ninth grader who happened to earn her wrath on any particular day for no particular reason. And the conversation went on. That teacher's classroom was room 213. Remember the big Z and homemade rolls in the cafeteria on Pasta Friday? The left side of my face grew more and more numb. I was grateful for the distraction from the inevitable that this trip down memory lane was providing. And then I asked, how about those freshman year English workbooks? You know, sense of sentences. My dentist looked at me blankly for a moment and then said, you know, I haven't thought about that book since high school, but I remember it perfectly now. We surmised that that torture device in the book had been used by that particular teacher for at least 20 years. Everyone used it. Everyone hated it. Most freshmen burned it at the end of the year. That ended our friendly chit chat, and his drill rubbed out and began its unrelenting assault. The point of my story is that Catholic schools create legacies. They link people together in unique and often unexplainable ways. They foster a culture of spirit and togetherness that can transcend the passing of time. They weave together the secular studies of math and music and science and Spanish with the worlds of faith, spirituality, and values, and create an education that sets its students apart from their peers in ways that are both subtle and profound. Godly is such a place. It is the school where athletes and artists perform on the same musical stage. It is the school where getting a new kid causes a stir that ripples through the building. But it's also the school where the title, The New Kid, lasts for about 3.2 seconds. It is the school where boys hop. It is the school where a dodgeball tournament causes a frenzy usually reserved for the Olympics. It is the school where news travels faster than the speed of light. And as we have seen, everyone knows the correct response to the command, let me see your alligator. Gaibu creates legacies. Gaibu is being honored as one of our nation's best Catholic high schools because Gaibu's students are honorable. They roll the punches, excel.
accept change, stay positive, serve others, try their best, and constantly strive to be the hands and feet of Christ to all with whom they come into contact in ways both minuscule and mammoth. God creates legacies, and God is honorable. And I wanted to stand before you and to speak at this most, at this most momentous occasion. Before I left the dentist's office last Thursday, he and I discussed a few more shared memories. But before sending me off with a number of the good antidotics, he said, you know, I still can't believe you remember the name of that workbook. I'm going to Google it and see if I can turn up a copy of it somewhere. <coughs> At my next appointment, I'm going to take this and show it. I found it online over a dozen years ago and bought it, thinking that I may be able to use it in my own classroom at some point. And I have. Such is my ninth grade English teacher's legacy, and one of the many legacies of Long Valley Catholic High School. And whether you are a Spartan or a Gator, it doesn't matter. There is strength, hope, and power in the legacy. My prayer is that God will continue to create legacies for her students, whatever they may be, for many years to come. Thank you for being young people of such honor and integrity, and thank you for helping us to achieve this most prestigious recognition. I am so proud to be one of your teachers, and I am so proud to be a part of God of